Okay, our next assignment, assignment five, uses compositing, but also is going to use our own creativity and maybe even our own manipulation of, of creation of pixels. And what the assignment is, is a GIF animation, but not just any GIF animation. It's, it has to show a transformation or a metamorphosis, if you like, a change of state from beginning, middle to end. So what might be a good example? Something like that. Right. We're going to make them short like this. <laughs> this is more kind of, uh, yeah, this works. It's nice when they have a, a clear beginning, middle, and end. But notice how none of these has a change of scene. You know, They don't tell a story across multiple settings. They're pretty contained in their ambition. Now, your requirements for this assignment are fairly straightforward. You are going to start with a sketch. And you need to use um, nine frames in your sketch. Some students do eight, though I think nine looks a lot better. You're allowed to do eight. You can do up to 12. But don't do more than 12. It's way too ambitious. Nine is the perfect amount, so I just highly recommend you do nine. And I'll show you how you can set that up in your sketchbook. If we just take a standard letter size here. <coughs> so, storyboards should look like this squares, like an old TV set. Why square? Because they are the most versatile compositional format. So they don't say portrait, they don't say landscape. They can be made to suit whatever story you want to tell. And you can storyboard within a square, but then decide to do your, your animation in a landscape format or in a portrait format. But I'd like you to storyboard it this way. So this is a three-on-three -three storyboard grid. It's like comic panels, except you leave quite a bit of space in between. Because in animation, the space between, or in storytelling, the space between panels, which is called the gutter, that is where time passes, right? So you have one moment here, and then time passes as it goes over this space. And then the next moment, the next moment, the next moment. So this is all the beginning, right? These three frames. This is all the middle. And this is the end. And you always want to think of your, your animation as having those three phases that are distinct from each other. So the requirements are you have to use something you've already created. And I haven't thought about this at all. And you have the luxury before next class of sketching and thinking about that. What do you want to create? What do you want to work with? I think I animated mostly the setting last semester in my demos. So this time, do this with blue. Um, I'll work with my character maybe, and maybe also use my setting. I could use my cloud. I could do lots of things. I could use my cartoon jumble. But when you're doing a story, you need three things for a narrative. You need a character, and a character is what you tell the story through. So you can tell a story through a tree, right? If you want to tell a story of a hurricane blowing in, you show the tree, everything's peaceful. The clouds start to darken. The tree starts to be sh um, rocked back and forth. Its leaves start to fall, right? We know that the wind is changing and that the, the environment is changing through our character, through the experience of that tree. In the end, the tree gets uprooted and thrown out of the frame. And that's a story of the tree as a character. So you don't even need to be um, a living element to be a, a character. It could be a paperclip on a desk. And you can tell the story through that paper clips experience. So you need some sort of character that helps the, the audience kind of anchor on something and how 
how that something leads you through the story, whether the character itself changes or whether the setting around the character changes. Next, you need a setting. So there are lots of comics I grew up reading, like Garfield. But for some reason, Garfield, because Garfield, Jim Davis is kind of lazy about backgrounds. I don't blame him. But um, Garfield's just like, sitting on a surface as normal, right? But this time he has a scarf on. So why is that scarf there? Well, that tells us that Garfield's outside. <laughs> so when you, when you don't show a setting, your viewer still has to make up a setting. So any, any acknowledgement you can give it, any control you want to have of it is going to be helpful. I just spent too long drawing Garfield. But character and setting are both necessary. Even if you end up doing a GIF animation on a blank background, whatever happens to your character is going to get us to invent a setting. So you still want to think about it. Next, this is the big one. You need the illusion of time passing. Because we are only able to create that as an illusion. And here on our storyboard, we can do that with the illusion of sequential panels, right? Even though we'll show everything in our storyboard, because they're separate panels, we'll start here, we'll end here, we know that time passes. As we put this together in our Photoshop file, we will play these panels in sequence. And so the illusion of time passing will turn into actual time experienced by our viewer and we'll determine the, the timing of them, the setting, uh, and how long we want to spend at each moment. So these are only keyframes that we are storyboarding. This nine frame animation will probably turn into like a nine, 90, 50 frame animation. But these are the key moments where we want to show. So the first thing you generally do is you establish your setting or you introduce your character. So establish slash introduce. So what am I going to do? I'm going to establish my setting first. It's the Arctic. So this is what's called an establishing shot. There's no character here. I have water, a glacier, background mountains, moon in the sky. Make sense? By establishing it early on, I don't need to work so hard to tell the viewer where I am from now on. Next, I'm going to introduce my character. And my character is going to be my fantasy guy. He's going to move up from the water. He's going to poke his head out from the water. That should be fun. So there he is, my character. He is moving this way. Arrows are very helpful in animations and in storyboards. So I know he's moving. There he is. Up out of the water onto this glacier. Okay? Then I'll have what's called the hero shot, which is when I show the full character. And it's nice that I already have this basically built as a frame, right, with the assignment three. So he's on the glacier. There he is. So he got up and on from the water. Okay, that's a nice beginning. It's not a transformation, right? So what's going to happen? I think the sun is, I'm going to make this environmental. Earth Day is coming. I'm going to introduce a new element. Sun is going to start to burn brightly. So what's the transformation? The transformation is going to be to the environment. My creature is not going to turn into a butterfly. You can do that. That's cool. Um, but I'm going to have my environment change. That'll be fun. So I have these glaciers, right? The sun's going to get brighter and brighter. By the middle of my story, the sun's going to be beaming down, and the environment's going to start to melt. And you can uh, make notes. That's why you have such wide margins in the storyboard. So the melt begins. I'm going to have my character 
kind of thrash around a little bit, upset as this happens. I'll just say upset. I won't. I don't know exactly what I'll do. Maybe he moves his tail back and forth. I don't know. Maybe his eyes bug out of his head. I can have lots of fun. Now, that's the middle. Big state change there. Now the consequences. My character is going to sink as the glacier recedes. So I'm going to see his body and his head. So this is my character. Only you have to understand your sketches. <laughs> I might even zoom in to him as he gets surrounded by water. Starts to sink. Sinks fully. Just little bubbles. And then we pull back and we see the whole environment with just the ice melted. So this could be called the consequences shot. And if I want to zoom in, I want to put that so that this gets more focused in on my character. This is a, uh, a close-up right here. And then that requires pulling out, pan out, to see the consequence. Now, why is this a good storyboard for this project? Does something change from beginning, middle, to end? Does something transform or metamorphize from beginning, middle, to end? The environment in this case, yes. Um, does it have a clear kind of beginning stage of storytelling, a middle stage of storytelling where something begins to happen and then an end stage where, where things resolve? Yes. Why is this particularly useful for GIF animations? Well, GIF animations you don't watch just once. They loop, right? And you want this to be entertaining for more than just one second. You want it to be entertaining for like 10 seconds. You want to get likes. You want to get sent on. So. It's good if you can think of a way to have it repeat that makes sense. So it's not just a jump cut at the end. All of a sudden it's melted, all of a sudden it's back. How can it reset after this? You know, I might think about that as I'm doing different panels. Maybe the sun kind of goes away, it starts to get colder, and it resets back to the establishing shot. But by getting rid of the character in both the beginning and the end, it allows me to introduce him, make him go away within the animation itself. So sometimes this last panel will be the exact same as the first panel, and that's called a set to reset. So this gives me a good starting place for next class. Um, it tells me what kind of assets I need to then build and what kind of assets I need to go find from what I already have. Here, I have everything except the sun already built into my landscapes and my creature, right? And then the melting, I could find additional assets of water or melted ice, or I can just manipulate the pixels I already have, right? But the sun will be a new asset I need to find. Uh, I could look for heat waves. I could look for environmental factors. I could look for even GIF animations of snow. And I can use those. You can composite with animations the same way you can composite with layers once you understand how it all works. Uh, also, a big advantage of GIF animations, they are not high resolution. <laughs> so we are going to do this at 8 by 8 inches for each panel by about 150 pixels per inch, which is great screen resolution. But you do not print GIF animations, right? Rather, you view them on devices. And 8 by 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch is plenty big to see on a screen. What we will print is actually a clean version of the storyboard, which uses screen grabs from the animation. So we'll have a sketch storyboard, a finished GIF animation, and then a finished storyboard that actually shows panels from the animation itself. And that's a good portfolio piece. 
All right, good luck. I'm here for a lab.